Hi, you're welcome to Financial Freedom Hub, the online financial education and tutorial channel. My name is John Kennedy Akutia. In this video, I want to bring to you an advice, a piece of advice from my experience in life, three mistakes I believe I've made, which I want to give you advice from that you don't repeat those same mistakes as a young person. So I just captioned this video as three mistakes to avoid at retirement. Three mistakes to avoid at retirement. So there are three things you should make sure at the time you are retiring, those things are not happening to you. So if you are a young person, you are beginning life. If maybe you are at my age, maybe it's too late for you. If you are caught up, but if it doesn't apply to you, no problem, share the video with whoever it may apply to. Number one, don't retire and you are still paying children's school fees. Don't retire and you are still paying children's school fees. So what is the remedy to that? It's one of the mistakes I realize I've made in life. Marry early, young man, young woman, if God blesses you, you finish school and you get work you are doing, don't say, I want to make a lot of money before I marry. At the age of 25, 26, if you have a decent source of income, you have a place to lay your head, you can marry. You mature, you can marry. Marry early, don't make my mistake. I married at the age of 36. God has been faithful. He blessed me with children. But now at the age of 36 and you start producing and let's say you have three years interval between your children and then you have four children, it means you are thinking of 12 years. So 36 plus 12, that gives you how many years? 48 years. And then you are retiring at the age of 60. So that gives you 12 years to retirement. And so that should tell you that clearly by the time you are retiring, you are still going to be paying school fees. It is an error. Make sure it doesn't happen to you. So young man, young woman, marry in your 20s. If you are get work and you are doing, you are gainfully employed, you have a place to lay your head. Don't chase the material things of this world and then continue procrastinating and continue postponing. You are a young lady, you are decently working, and then a young man comes your way that has a vision, has a future. Don't keep postponing and giving red cards and then waiting for Mr. Right to come your way. There is no Mr. Right, there is no Miss Right anywhere. Marriage is work and we trust God to work it out. Once you have the qualities you are looking for in a person, and then you can start life small and then you can grow big. Don't make that mistake. Because at retirement, there will be a lot of pressure on you financially and then your income may not be adequate as it was when you started life. Many opportunities of getting money as you started life may not be there. So marry early and make sure if God blesses you, produce your children early. By the time you are retiring, your retirement income is free for you to spend with your wife or with your husband and then you will not be paying children's school fees at that time. So do your calculation, the number of children you want to have, determine that the spacing you want to have between them and then make sure you calculate that by the time you are turning 60 and you are going on retirement, none of your children will be in school. At least the last one should have finished university or whatever and may be working. You will enjoy your retirement. Mistake number two you shouldn't make is don't retire in your employer or government bungalow or rented accommodation. It will be a lot of frustration on you after retirement. Those of us who maybe are working and then our employer gives us accommodation or we are government workers and they give us government bungalow. I promise you the day you are retiring, you are retiring out not only of the job, but you are retiring out of that bungalow or quarters, that accommodation they gave you. And then if you don't have anything built up for yourself, know that you are going to rent or if you are even living in a rental apartment, you should know that your income is going to reduce after retirement. You will not be strong to be doing the papa you have been doing. And so 
being in a rented apartment and sometimes the frustration of landlords and landladies increasing rents and then demanding rent advances arbitrarily for two, three years, sometimes can be frustrating. And that is not something you want to bear in your old age when you retire. So my advice, again, is try to do something whilst you are strong and then you are making the money, no matter how small it is. Because no matter how many children you have, by this time they are finished school, all of them are going to leave you and it's going to be the period of the emptiness, as we call it. It's going to be with you two, between you and your spouse alone and then maybe you need any helping hand. So you, need, you don't need any elaborate, huge, gigantic building. Even if it's a simple three-bedroom house you have, even if it's a two-bedroom house you have and it is your own, and you know that when I retire and I move out of the luxurious government bungalow or the company bungalow or my accommodation that I rented, I can move into something that I'll have peace of mind. No landlord will come and harass you. No co-tenants will come and harass you for water bill and light bill. You have your independence. You have your privacy. You have killed one major source of frustration that will kill you early after retirement. So make sure you don't retire. At that one, at least, yes, I didn't start early, but right now I'm in the process of putting up something. And then it's in process for a number of years. A simple four-bedroom house and you are building for how many years now? But I'm trusting with where I've gotten to that by retirement, by the grace of God, I'll be in my own accommodation. So that one, at least I have remedied that one. So number one, make sure you are not paying school fees after retirement. Number two, make sure you don't retire into or in a government bungalow, company bungalow, or a rented accommodation. You will be frustrated in old age. And then number three, make sure you are not only retiring on your income and social security. I am in Ghana and so I'm looking at the situation in Ghana where majority of Ghanaians, our incomes are very low except a few Ghanaians whose incomes are high and so the social security will be anything to write home about. There are many people who retire and then they are depending and banking their hope on the SS. F, that social security contribution and there are people who get heartbroken there are people who collapse when they received the check to the lump sum of their social security i know cases where people were believing or trusting that when they receive their pension they are going to use it to build a house and it couldn't even buy a plot of land to begin with somebody went and then they gave him the check he looked at the check and then he shouted and collapsed don't let that happen to you so whilst you are working and then you can do multitasking and then do multiple jobs and the money is coming, you know, when we begin life, at that stage, we don't have wife, we don't have husband. So the money that comes, that is the time the responsibilities are less. And so you can invest the money into other income generating ventures. Don't continue eating your seed and then your fruit together. Separate a seed and then so number one, make sure you retire with enough savings that can take care of 15 to 20, 25, 30 years after your retirement. So budget, look at your family DNA and genetics and look at the life expectancy of your family. At what age, averagely, do people live? And so if your family, you are blessed with long life and the people live above 80 and 90, then from 60, calculate 20 to 30 years. So budget and make sure you have enough savings that will cover you for the next 20, 30 years. Or else have an investment in place that will generate regular cash flow that can sustain you. Because many of our pensions are nothing to write home about if you depend on them. There are times I go to certain banks and pay day for pensioners. You will be miserable. I tell you, you will be miserable. And if you don't learn from that, so I admonish you, find out when they pay pensioners and then go there during their pay time and go and see you will pity them and then know that that is going to be your state and my state if we don't plan so number one to avoid this make sure you have enough savings prepared for a number of years you are expecting to live after retirement and then number two make sure you have an investment that will be generating cash flow after your retirement and it can take care of you 
Or number three, make sure you have a passive income or semi-passive income that will support you because all age comes with its own health challenges and you need a lot of money with age as we grow our bodies are not the same all kinds of sicknesses and diseases begin to come in and then we need a lot of medications a lot of hospitalization and things like that and so make sure you prepare for that don't retire and then you are looking for another job that's another one. The only reason you must look for a job after retirement is for health reasons, to keep you active and to keep you socially connected. Because psychologically, when we retire, the brain tells us we are not functioning again and the body begins to deteriorate at a faster pace. So the only reason why you must look for a job after retirement must be for health and social reasons so that you can keep yourself active it should not be for economic reason. Make sure you build a financial safety net for retirement. So that is a little piece of advice I thought I should bring to you. I have a few years. Somebody say, are you on retirement or getting here? Yes, of course, we are aging. We are no longer small boys. We are aging and we are closer to retirement. By the time you cross 50 years, retirement is just in the next room by you. It opens that door, opens your own, and then you are inside there. And so plan your life. Make sure you marry early, give birth to children early. You are a woman. Don't follow career. Don't follow education. Give birth to your children. One time I'll do a video and show, I'll tell you the story between my wife and I. How we combine our marriage, our children, producing children with our schooling. I'll give you a testimony and then you see how you can multitask. In case that is another challenge, many of us are not fortunate for us to finish school and start career and know that we have no schooling to do. Because we're doing papa, papa, you do small school, you go and work, you didn't choose your parents well, so you have to now work, and whilst you are working, you have to now school yourself. And so sometimes when it happens like that, I'll show you in our personal story how we combine that and then we are where we are today. So God bless you. Thanks for watching. I remain your friend, Pastor John Kennedy. I'll see you in the next video. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel and then turn on the notification so that when we, pro we publish any video, you will be notified. Share the video with friends if you learned anything and then leave a comment so that we'll continue to interact. God bless you. See you in the next video.